The idea for Quiet Place 1 came from uh, these writers, Beckham Woods, who had come up with the idea. They wrote the original spec script, uh, so the idea of a family in peril from creatures who, if you made a sound, they would kill you. That was all them, and I thought it was an amazing idea. When I read the script, I was initially uh, offered to be in it as only an actor, and I thought if I rewrite and direct this, I could make it actually the greatest metaphor for parenthood that I had seen myself, um, which all producers love hearing that actors want to write and direct. That's a, that's a guaranteed yes. Um, very much not. It was, it was a long process and one that I had probably the greatest creative experience in my life is uh, basically writing a love letter to my kids about what I thought about being a parent and what it really meant to, what would you really do for your kids was about the first one. And so when the second one came along, I told the studio I didn't want any part of it. I told them that I, they should go off and make the movie without me. I, I didn't think I could ever articulate, you know, this idea of parenthood as, as well as I did in the first one, have that personal experience. And as I think they were considering what to do next, I had this one idea, which was to make Millie the lead of the movie. And when I thought of that, it wasn't just because Millie would be fantastic in the movie. It was actually that I could actually continue the metaphor from the first one and make this as organic, as personal, if not more personal to me, because if the first one's a love letter to my kids, then this is a, a very hopeful dream that my kids could be as courageous, as hopeful, and as optimistic as these kids are. Um, if the first movie's about that promise that you make to your kids that if you stay with me, I can protect you forever, all parents know that that's a false promise, but we make it anyway. And I think that that promise is inevitably broken. And when it is broken, I think that's what adolescence is. I think that's what growing up is. And that's what that's where Millie came in and that character came in. She was able to take this idea of loss and this idea of what do you do in the darkest times and soldier on and be this hopeful, amazing character. The movie uh, inevitably had to be bigger, not because it was a sequel, but because the Abbott family had to leave the farm. And I think that when the Abbott family leaves the farm because it's been compromised and the barn burns down, they have to go into the outside world. And I didn't go bigger into the outside world because I thought it would be cooler for a sequel. I went outside because that's what happens. So th that scene where um, they come to the end of the path was one of the first things I had thought of because right there it sort of encapsulates the idea that the next step they take will be uncharted waters and the idea that the next step you take could be the one that kills you and it sort of amps up the terror it amps up the intensity all by itself organically story-wise and so then it's about where do they go and you just I just kept remembering all the rules of the first one and instead of going to the coolest place I went to the one that makes the most sense which is they're going to go to wherever the fire has been lit and where they know someone will be waiting for them good or bad um, and so they arrive at the steel mill, which they hope is a place that they can stay quiet. And, you know, th this, this larger uh, world was so much fun to play with because it was one of the things I thought about a lot on the first movie, which is how are other people living? If you don't have the security net of this father who's built this incredible system of safety, how do you live? And you live probably, Killian Murphy's character is a reflection of exactly that, how other people would live in uh, without a family, without the system of love, without the system of safety, you live in a scary world where you don't trust anyone. And so he becomes this very morally ambiguous character who you hope will become the hero of the movie uh, that you, you, from a movie standpoint, you want him to be a hero, but in real life, you're kind of questioning him the whole way through the movie. The family obviously, very obviously, is changed by losing a member of the family. But I think that one of the beautiful things, and it's it, and it's a cinematic thing, but something I really loved watching all these actors play with was, how are you impacted by that? I think that there is immediate loss and a sense of sadness, but I think the thing that they encapsulated so well is, how do you uh, carry on whatever legacy my character had? So certainly Millie, I think in a lot a lot of ways, becomes my character and better than my character. And I think Noah becomes braver than he ever thought he could be. And Emily becomes this incredible mother in a way that she never knew she had to be because she has to not only take care of all these kids, but she has to protect them and she has to do crazy things to protect them. And, and so it, it really almost made each of the characters better, my character leaving. As sad as I was to leave the franchise, that was stupid and I didn't think, to, uh, think ahead too much, but it actually made all the characters better. It was really moving, if I'm honest. I think that coming back to this, 
When we were shooting the first one, we had no idea if anybody would see it. We had no idea, more than the success of the film being as amazing as it was, it was really that we were so emotionally moved that people loved the movie and connected to the movie as much as we did. I think that there's something very particular about that. There's a high school level need that everyone has to hope that other people think what's cool, what you think is cool is cool too. And we got that. And so I think coming back to this, we all had this new perspective of what we were doing was so special and that this business is a fantasy camp. We're lucky to be in it any which way. Um, but to be a part of something like this is an added layer of, of uh, just an added layer, layer of crazy lucky. The part that Killian plays is a part that I was really excited to have in the world, which is, again, I think he's the representation of how other people are living. Um, if you don't have that security of safety, that safety net of a system of love and um, protection that the father set up for the whole family in the first one, how would you live? You'd probably be a lot sadder. You'd probably be dealing with loss not particularly well. You wouldn't have anyone around you and you'd be very untrusting. You'd be someone who doesn't believe that life can ever get better again. And I, as much as I love that character that I wrote, there is no way I could have dreamt up a performance like Killian gave me. I think that he came into this world, he was a fan of the first movie, which I think is very clear by his unbelievable, um, you know, sort of how nimble he is in this movie emotionally. He's, he got exactly what we were doing, exactly why he was an important part of the movie. And he did a better job than I ever could have wrote. Um, as far as Jaiman, Jaiman plays, I think, the representation of how other people are living if they're not living in darkness. If there was hope, how would people be living? And he encapsulates that perfectly. He is such a warm, beautiful human being as himself. And in his performance, he brings that and more. I think that he shows you the, 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 the hopeful potential of what life can be again. Um, he's, he's the living version of, if we ever make it through, maybe we'd look like this. Well, it's one of those things where I, I, this movie, as corny as it sounds, is a thank you note to all the fans who watched the first one. I think that um, I realized in this process, I was an audience member first before I was a director or a writer or an actor. And by that, I mean, there were all the terrifying feelings of why would you do a sequel? Why would you take what was so good about the first one and ruin it? And I was so scared of all those things. So I made it um, my mission and really worked hard to find a way into this story, which was as organic as the first one. And that's why we ended up calling it part two, because it's actually a continuation of the experience. It is much bigger. It is much more intense. It is much scarier because you're more scared than the first one because you know these characters so well. You will feel the sound and the intensity of the moments much more because you know the rules of sound. You know what sound means. Um, and I think that at the end of the day, all the things we got to play with was all because of the love and respect we got shown by the audience. So I hope that people get to go watch this and not only have as good an experience as they did on the first one, but a better experience.